welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have Dwayne Corsi. He is an emergency physician and he wrote the Kevin MD article, An Emergency Medicine Life. Dwayne, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and journey to where you are today? Okay, I uh, was born in the city of Detroit, Michigan, grew up in a suburb of Warren, where I went to high school. I went to Wayne State University in Detroit and obtained a Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy and became a pharmacist. And I worked in a osteopathic hospital uh, for my internship and for uh, as, as a full-time employee for a year where I learned about osteopathic medicine. And from there, I applied to Michigan State University, the osteopathic school, got accepted and graduated from there, and then uh, came back to that hospital system to do my uh, internship and residency in emergency medicine. And since then, I've worked for the past uh, 28 years in the Ascension St. John Health System in uh, in Madison Heights, Michigan. So I understand you're also a program director in the past for an emergency medicine residency program. So tell me, what are, what are some trends when it comes to medical students applying to emergency medicine? Um, what are some recent trends and where do you see the future of emergency medicine to go? Been a high increase in the number of applicants to emergency medicine. Um, some t- a few years back, it was almost difficult sometimes to to field an entire class, whereas now we're getting 600 to 800 applicants a year for eight spots a year. Uh, a much more diverse population of uh, residents coming from all over the country and really all over the world. We've had uh, foreign residents, even as far away as Africa in our program. But other than that, uh, they're still strong. They're, uh, they do well. They're eager to learn and uh, happy to have them. And you mentioned some characteristics already. So that kind of foretells my, my next question. So as a uh, program director, what were some qualities that you looked for in a medical students that would make them strong emergency medicine physicians going forward? Yes, I looked for candidates that were self-starters that uh, knew what they were getting into with emergency medicine. Uh, a lot of medical students don't really know the stress involved in uh, working shifts and emergency medicine. You really have to be a go-getter. You have to be willing to pick up those charts, go see the patients, uh, form your your plan, present it to the attending, and then want to learn procedures and things like that. That was really the main thing I I look for uh, in a candidate. And you mentioned that some medical students aren't sure about what an emergency medicine life would be like. So go into more detail. What what are some things that you want prospective medical students or prospective applicants to know about emergency medicine? Well, it's shift work. So the majority of your time working, if you think about a Monday through Friday from nine to five is a very short amount of time during the week. You're going to be working some days where you're going to be working a lot of afternoons, a lot of midnights, a lot of weekends, a lot of holidays. You're going to miss a lot of time with your family and friends because uh, when they're off, you're going to be working and they don't, they don't maybe understand that when they're, they're starting and how tough that can be. Uh, and also, it's very stressful while you're there and you may have 20, 25 patients that you're taking care of in a, in a shift and many of them are critically ill. Uh, Others are not so ill, but they may be disrespectful and even aggressive with you. And, and some people aren't ready for that. It's, it wasn't what I was totally expecting when I went into it. You know, I, I started 40 years ago and, uh, you know, you thought respect was for physicians was still there. But in the emergency department, people are having their worst day. Many of them are... Uh, intoxicated or they have mental illnesses and things like that. And it's hard to, to deal with that. And a, a lot of prospective residents may not be able to understand it, what they're going to have to, to deal with. All right. So let's transition now into your Kevin MD article that you wrote. It's okay. titled An Emergency Medicine Life. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read that article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? 
usually around July 1st, I don't know any other profession where one date is as, as, as important as it is in the medical education uh, field, because that is the day when everybody, all the, the new graduated medical students start to become real physicians as uh, first year residents. So you go from June 30th, where the, you know, the department and the residents are running like a well-oiled machine, literally to the next day when you have interns at, you know, starting their very first day taking care of patients on their own with supervision, of course. And a lot of times we tend to make jokes about July 1st. Oh, you know, here we go, July 1st, it's mm -hmm. gonna be miserable. The intern's gonna be asking me, oh, can I give a, a Tylenol for this, my patient with a headache, that kind of thing. So, and I was guilty of that too. So I thought, let me write about July 1st being a little more meaningful and what I went through uh, my July 1st, I remember it well. <laughs> Uh, calling my wife saying, oh my God, I don't know if, I can, if I'm going to be able to handle this. Uh, and then going to the first day you're in attending on July 1st and you see your name on the, on the chart and how that hits you, you mean you're excited, but there's also still some trepidation and some fear uh, because it's your first day as an attending. And then when I got into medical education, you know, July 1st became the transition point. And yes, it's difficult uh, when, when you're kind of cruising along with well-oiled uh, residents to go back to interns that have to start all over again. But later, as you, as you uh, get a little bit older and you can look back, July 1st is actually a day that should be revered and not feared. And uh, it's unique to, to the medical profession. And that's what I was trying to, to talk about. Now for those new medical interns and residents where just on June 30th there were medical students and July 1st there are physicians practicing. What kind of advice do you have for them in making that transition? You have to step it up because you are the physician now. This is why you uh, wanted to go to medical school, but don't worry. The attendings are here. I'm here with you. I'm not going to let you make a mistake, but I do want you to spread your wings and learn to be a physician. You are a doctor now. You will be in charge of patients. And really, when you're on the night shift, you're really by yourself. I mean, you can make phone calls and things like that, or maybe ask a more senior resident. But you need to want to learn what it's, what it's like to be a physician. So there's no grandstands in the emergency department. You're not going to learn by looking. You have to do. You have to make decisions. We will help you. Um, but it's time to, to fly on your own. Now, you've been a program director and emergency physician for decades now. Any particularly poignant July 1st stories that come to mind um, over your decades of experience in the ER? No, just as I wrote in the article, you know, uh, seeing the, uh, the new interns come in with their nice clean white coats, although uh, many of them don't wear white coats anymore, mm -hmm. uh, eager and ready to go. It just happened. It happens pretty much every year. They're very excited to get going. I usually at orientation would ask them, how many of you are excited and how many of you have some, some trepidation? And usually the, the, the honest one would raise, her, raise his or her hand for being, trep for, for being somewhat fearful because I know I was too, and it's just natural. But pretty much that's it. I don't remember any one specific uh, encounter that uh, would have been poignant. So I've asked a lot of questions about your past and experience in emergency medicine. So I want to switch gears and look towards the future of the emergency medicine profession. What do you see are some of the trends affecting emergency physicians? Because on my physician Facebook groups, I'm seeing a lot of emergency physicians out of work. Um, a lot of departments are getting bought out by private equity and whatnot. And I actually see physician, emergency physicians looking for jobs. From your view, what are some of the trends that you see? Yes, I mean, when I started out uh, so many years ago, you could go anywhere in the country, anywhere. Then a couple of cities kind of got uh, buttoned up, you know, like LA and uh, Denver, places where everybody wanted to live. But now we've gotten to the point, yes, with private equity, um, I started out as an employee of the hospital, then in a private group, and then a uh, contract medical group bought out 
our private equity group. And, you know, they seem to want to be more involved in the financial aspect and not really the patient care aspect. Uh, so they cut hours, they hiring more um, advanced practice providers that probably cost a little bit less. And, you know, COVID had something to do with it because initially we were so hit by, by COVID that we were very busy, but then people stopped coming to the emergency department because they were afraid. So across the country, volumes actually went down. Now they're back up again. But during that time, the contract medical groups cut hours, cut positions, that type of thing. So yes, now my residents last year had a hard time finding jobs, all of them. They all eventually did, but it's, I mean, they couldn't necessarily go where they wanted to go. So the trend seems to be to bring in more advanced practice providers and less physicians. Now, against this landscape, what kind of advice do you have for current emergency physicians when so much around them financially, economically, and in terms of practice environment is changing? I would tell them to probably stay where they're at because especially if they you know, built up a reputation where they're at, even if a contract medical group comes in, you may have to, to stick it out uh, because you may have a hard time finding somewhere else to go. Whereas before we could, we could move around anywhere we wanted to go pretty much. So I would say be careful because if, if they're not aware of that, uh, especially if they're not in medical education and they're not dealing with new residents, graduating residents that are having a hard time, they not, might not be aware of the fact that it's difficult to, uh, to change jobs now. We're talking to Dwayne Corsi. He's an emergency physician and he wrote the Kevin MD article an Emergency Medicine Life. So Dwayne, during this interview, we talked a lot about the challenges facing emergency medicine, but as you reflect on your career, tell me some of the rewards emergency medicine gave you. Oh, the, the, the rewards are you get to save lives on a regular basis. There's nothing better than, you know, when you make your first uh, save, uh, whether it be a heart attack, a stroke, or an overdose, or gunshot wound or major trauma and you're able to handle that and stabilize the patient i mean if if we don't do our job and stabilize the patient they're never going to make it to the surgeon and never going to make it to the intensive care unit so that's the most rewarding thing other things that you might not think of would be the, the family dynamics that, that you come in contact with um, an elderly parent and the children you know end of life type of things where you can help with that that's very rewarding too. And really for me, later in my career, I found that seeing my graduating residents that started out on that July 1st, you know, not knowing much, being very uh, green, and then going out in the world and becoming program directors, becoming di directors of their department, uh, writing articles and taking care of patients even better than I could do that became more rewarding to me than even saving a life was that I had a role in bringing these young physicians and turning them from a medical student into somebody who could take care of life threatening critical situations. If you were to choose your specialty all over again, would it be emergency medicine? Yes, absolutely. I have no regrets. And my final question, what's your take home message that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? Um, I would just say to embrace July, July 1st, don't fear it. Um, it really can be very rewarding to bring in these new medical, medical uh, school graduates, nurture them, you know, expect that, yes, it's going to be a little bit harder to work with them to bring them along, but uh, the rewards once you do and you look back are fantastic. Dwayne, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thank you, Kevin.